Hi everyone and welcome to another of my Smug Mug tutorials. In this video we are going to look at blogging. Now one of the many things I hear people say or complain about is that platforms like Smug Mug don't have a blogging facility. Well in a sense that's very true. Uh, Smug Mug doesn't have a dedicated blogging facility but that doesn't mean that you can't have a blog and it doesn't mean that you can't write a blog. You just need to work a little bit differently. So before we begin, just a little reminder that I am a Smug Mug affiliate and if you don't already have a Smug Mug account or you haven't signed up for their free 14 day trial, then you can check out the link in the description which will uh, give you a 15% discount should you decide to sign up to one of the Smug Mug plans after your 14 day trial. So how do we blog with Smug Mug? Well, one of the things a lot of people do is they just go and get a blog with a third party uh, website such as WordPress and then they just create and write their blog there and well you could do that and you can set up links in the menu to take you between your Smug Mug website and your blog and vice versa. But why do that? Why have two separate sites when you can do it all here on Smug Mug? So I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that and you'll be surprised it's not as difficult as you think. Now this is my blog on WordPress. Now I've had this blog for many 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 years long before I even got a Smug Mug website. So I keep this uh, maintained and I, I uh, continue to use this blog. So for demonstration purposes I'm going to take one of the articles on my blog here and I'm going to reproduce it on Smug Mug along with another one, and then I'm going to show you how I set this up. So uh, to get started, if you go into your Smug Mug organizer, the first thing you want to do is create a folder. So we go up here to create, create a folder. Now this is going to be your main index page for your blog. Now basically a blog is, is, is is essentially like a magazine really. You've got a main index page and then you've got a series of articles within that blog and your main index page just is like the contents page and people can scroll through and choose which articles they want to read. So your folder will be your front page, your index page. So you can call it what you will, most people just call it blog. Well thing is if you have a page that just says blog, well you know, there are billions and billions and trillions of blogs out there. It doesn't really tell the search engines anything. You've got to title your page with a re relevant title and something that somebody's more likely to search for. So if you're on Smug Mug, you're a photographer, you're going to write a photography blog. But rather than photography blog, let's make it nicer and call it photography articles. That's the title of our folder, which is also going to be our main page. So we'll call it photography articles, give it a description. So here you can read a series of photography articles, spell that correctly, articles and then maybe describe what kind of articles you're going to have, tutorials, um, whatever. Okay, I won't go too much into that now. Put some relative keywords here. So again, photography articles. No, repeat that. Photography articles. Photography tutorials, etc, etc, etc. Down here is your URL, so make sure that URL is photography slash articles. And that's it, that's done. Go to security and sharing, make sure it's public. 
make sure anyone has access and make sure that it's searchable. My, now my site setting, you've got site setting here. Site setting is usually set to yes. So if it says no, that means that your site setting is set to yes. But if you want for this particular page or this particular folder to make it not searchable, you would just turn that to no. But we want it to be searchable on the web and searchable in the SmugMug community. So make sure that they're all set and then click create. So here is our folder and inside this folder, we are going to put all of our blogs, all of our articles. Now, whenever you write new articles, you must make sure that you create them inside this folder. So everything is kept together. Now, as I said, this is going to be your main index page. So we can customize this page. And the way to do that is to click view on site and then up here to customize design. Now over here on the right, you'll see that it says all folders. Now this is a custom template for all your folders and it will probably look something like this. You've got a section which will show all galleries, all photo galleries that are placed inside that folder and all pages. So this, any changes we make to this will apply to all folders. So that means that any new folders you create will automatically have this template applied. So we don't want to adjust this one. What you want to do is go here to the plus sign and make this folder custom. Yeah, by making this folder custom, you are separating it from all your folders customizations and it will no longer inherit customizations made at that level. Yes, that's exactly what we want. So we want to create a unique folder and hence a unique page. So now, now we've got this in green and any changes we make here will affect just this folder. So we want to come down here and you want to get rid of that. You don't want to show your galleries. All you want to show here are your pages. So that means that any new uh, blogs we create will automatically show up here. So that's automated. Up here, you've got automatically your breadcrumbs. I normally get rid of this and I create a unique title for the page. So we want to make this into an actual page. So if you come down here to add content blocks, come down here to text, you can choose to put the title in or you can choose to just put the create a text button up here. And again, I like to put it in bold. So again, let's get the page title here. Photography articles, highlight that, centralize it, and then make that a heading one tag. So this is the main title. This should be a H1 tag. This should be only one H1 tag on your page. So your main title is going to be the H1 tag. And this is also a search term on Google. Someone may search for photography articles. And if you've got this in your meta title, your description, in your main H1 tag, and also written somewhere on your page, then there's a good chance that Google or other search engines will index this page for that search. So click done. And here, now we have the title. So if you want to put some text underneath that, so again, you can either add another text box or you can go back and edit this and then just go down one, centralize it and this time just make it some normal text. Here you can read a series of photography articles and tutorials. You can write more, but we'll just write that for now. So that is now, let's get rid of that. So now we've got the H1 title and text underneath. So you can do it all in one box, so you can do it in separate boxes. Let's click OK. Now, if you want that to be bigger, let's just go back and edit that again. Highlight this part of the text and come up here to set the size. So you can set it to 20. Now that's bigger. 
if you want to add more pictures you want to add pictures and things like that you can do but we won't do that for now you'll see how i'm going to do that when i show you how to create the page for your blog so if that's done click done click publish now now let's go back to organize now this is important make sure that we navigate to our photography articles folder and then within that folder create new now we want to create in order to create our first article we want to create a web page but if you're going to add pictures to your article then you've got two options uh, if you're going to use pictures that are already in one of your smug mug galleries that are actually on the website for sale then you can just navigate to that folder to get your images but if you're going to use more specific images like I am here now the the images on here are not going to be for sale so I've got a diagram I've got a couple of diagrams for example I've got some illustrative images here to illustrate some photography technique and these pictures I don't want to be made for sale and I, they're certainly not in my smug mug gallery so for that reason I'm going to create a gallery now I'm going to create it within this folder just to keep everything nice and neat and organized and that's also <clears throat> part of the reason why I suggested that on your main folder page you make that custom page and you get rid of the section that shows photo galleries because you don't want those galleries showing up you just want the web pages showing up so we can create a gallery and then I would give it the title of the article so in this case the title of the article is focal length comparison so I'm just going to call it focal length comparison photos that's all I don't need to bother with descriptions because I don't want this to be searchable so uh, if we go to security and sharing in this case I want to make it unlisted not private if I make it private the, the pages the images won't show up on the page so I need to make it unlisted anyone with the link then I want to go down to search settings no I don't want this web searchable and I don't want it to be smug mud searchable the other thing I want to do is go down to the shopping and turn this off because I don't want this to show up in my uh, uh, as images for sale so I can turn that off now I've done all that click create so now I can upload the photos that I want to use on this page into my photo gallery specifically for this article so I've got them already prepared in a folder on my computer so I'll upload them now now it's good practice to be organized so I, I prepared all my photos beforehand I put them into a folder and you can in my case I'm going to take the text from my existing blog but you if you're going to write an article I suggest that you write your article out in Microsoft Word or something and have all the text there in Word ready so you can grab it like I'm going to so that's done here are my images so now I'll go back to my main folder and again this time I want to create a web page so make sure I've got my folder selected as I've got here and go up to create web page now in this case now you may have seen my uh, video where I showed you how to create an about me page if not I'll stick a link up to it now in this case we're just going to choose custom we want to start with a blank page now I'll give this page a title again it's the title of the article focal length comparison you can put a description in here again I won't do it now just to save time so description keywords again make sure the URL is matches the title if it's not too long and here you can create a featured image so that's important so let's navigate now to our folder and this is going to be my header image so I'll choose that as my featured image and click create now I've got a page and this is going to be 
one article within my blog. So basically, you know, uh, all you've got to do instead of uh, having a dedicated program that, that that you write your blog and then it does everything automatically, you just have to create each blog, each article page manually. But once you've created the folder and the main page, you'll see that afterwards, all you have to do then is create pages and everything will be added automatically to the index page. So let's start by default. It gives you this, these breadcrumbs. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I want to put my title, copy my title, and I'm going to put my header image there to start with. So let's go down to content blocks, photo, single photo. Let's add a photo to the top. I want to the photo size to fit width. I want it centered. I'm going to, you can give it a title. Title alignment can be center if you want. Title size. Now you can choose to show this or not. It's entirely up to you. So photo aspect, I, I for headers, I think three to one is the best. Now let's add the photo. Here it is. Here's my folder. And here's my header photo. Now, for now we click done. Here's our header. Now if you want it to stretch full page, which you should, we can just simply come down to here and select layout and choose the stretchy layout. There we go. And set your margins. So you've got a top margin of 24. If you want that to go right to the very top then just zero that. Make sure your side and bottom margins are zero. Body width is auto. You don't want any of the sidebars turned on. And that's that. Now your header stretches the full width. Now you've got the title above, so you can go back up to the tools. And the title, basically, you can set the title size to make it bigger or smaller, centralize it left or right, or as I would do, get rid of the title. I don't want it there because I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm going to put it underneath, but again, I'm going to do the same as I did with the folder. I'm going to go back to content, text, text button, place the title underneath, let's highlight that, centralize it and make it a H1 tag. Now again, for titles, I do like that they're in uppercase. So you can do it however you want, of course. Focal length comparison, H1 tag, here is my title. Now if I want to uh, increase the margins on that, I just simply go here to the dimensions and I can make a larger top and bottom margin to give a bit more gap there. If you want to preview this, there's the start of my blog. There's my header and there's my title. So let's go back, keep it normal, set the text size, and now you've added your name underneath as well. Now we just need to work away in the layout of your blog. So if you've got an idea of how you want your article to look, so in this case I have, so I can just simply start now by highlighting this is the first subtitle coming down here and I can start building my article. So there's my first. Now, as I said, you shouldn't have more than one H1 tag. So this title now is going to be a H2 tag. And then my first paragraph like so, we'll put it down here. 
set my text size. And now I've got it like this. If I want to centralize that text, that first bit of text, again, we can just come up, highlight it, and centralize the first bit of text. Now the next section is going to have two blocks because I've got an illustration next to it. So again, you can highlight the whole lot. Again, in this case, put a text box underneath. Highlight this as H2 or H3. H2 in this case, H3 in this case. Text size 20. There we go. Now, if you want to adjust the, the margins on the left, if it's too close to the edge, again, just simply come in and set the margin accordingly. Or you can make it, oh, not quite that much. You can make it larger if you want 100 to really centralize it but then we're going to want to do the same with this one of course so click the dimensions button and in this case left 100 right 100 so then it's all lined up so now i've got it a bit more centralized here and i'm not worried about this because i'm going to add here a photo beside it so let's go up to photos, single photo, and in this case, put it to the right. Now I can navigate to my folder again, where I've already got that first illustration. And I can insert that there, and I can adjust the size. Action on click none, or open light box if you want people to view a bigger version of it. Info style. Well, I've got no title. If you've got a title, then you can select that. So um, if we put a title, say focal length, I don't think I have a title here, but say I wanted to put the title focal length in, you can center photo or not. Photo can be full width, or you can change the size of it if you want. And the aspect ratio you can change so just like any other photo info style well this will only affect how it looks when viewing the gallery so in this case people aren't going to view the gallery so you you just want to leave it off there's no need for it so i'm going to get rid of that i don't want a title but there's your option if you want to have a title so now i've got these two images I've got the image, sorry, and the text here. Now I can adjust each box accordingly. So if I want, for example, to have the image bigger, then I can make that 70%, or I can make it 60%, or I can make it smaller at 40%. And so once I've done that, the dimensions I can set. So again, oh, in this case, I want the right margin to be 100 because the left margin here is 100. There we go. Now, again, if I want to, uh, I could increase the gap between the title and that. I could make the text bigger if I want to, to line everything up. So let's leave it like that for now. So there's the first section what is focal length and an illustration. Now the next section underneath is very similar. So in this case, I've got a photo first and then I've got text on the other side. So again, I just come back here and I start with a photo, single photo, navigate to my folder where I've got everything ready. So here I see I've actually forgotten that photo. So Unfortunately, you can't add a photo from here. So we've got to cancel, click cancel, and we need to come out of this. We need to go again to upload. So it's gonna take us out so we can save that for later. It's gonna take us away from that page and upload into an existing gallery. 
go to our gallery and then click done now I'm going to find that photo and upload it here we are uh, uh, illustration I should say not a photo so I've added the illustration now to my folder and now I can upload that illustration to the folder and use it so let's go back to my blog page and start again let's add a single photo underneath and this time it's there to add actions on click again open light box so let people view a bigger one if you want to and all of this don't worry it's too big because we're going to change that in a minute so fit width original size it however you want click done now come in again just like we saw before and add a text box to the right copy and paste the text and format it accordingly again come over here and set the margins now you, you can you may have noticed or you may know this you can set the margins for the page but if you set the margins side margins to 100 it also affects your header so that's the reason I didn't do it there because I want the header to be full width and then I'll go through and set each section margin left and right to 100 left one to 100 and the right one to 100 here so everything's equalized now again just as I did before if I want to make that illustration section smaller or bigger I can do there we go there's a big gap here so you can add more text if you want to or you want to move the text down a bit you can do so you can play around with it I'm not going to do too much now but as you can see we're basically just creating a page and then we're laying out and formatting our page accordingly so let's work away and build the rest of the page finally how do we add a video now this is a video embedded from my youtube channel so the way that you do that is first of all you need to go to the video itself on youtube so in this case i'm just simply going to click this and go to the video on youtube itself so whatever video you want to embed just go to the video itself go to the share button and copy the url then come back here and scroll down to this, uh, video youtube just drag the block in and then just as it says here paste in the url set the options here if you want to scale to fit I don't so let's make it this big there we go again you can give it a title center the video autoplay on and off now I always keep it off because what it really annoys me when you open a web page and this video just starts playing all of a sudden and usually it's probably somewhere at the bottom of the page and you're wondering where all this talking and music or God knows what's coming from. So my advice to you is to have the autoplay off. So let people read the article first and then decide if they want to play the video. And that's that. Now again, I can let's go preview that page. And here's my blog. There we go people can scroll through and read my blog so I'm going to click now to publish publish now now if you go back to organize now go to your folder and view the folder on site 
There you go. There is my first blog there on my index page. Now again, I can customize that page. So let's go back to customize design. Go to the tools for that section. I can get rid of that if I want to, or I can call it articles, uh, whatever you want. Choose your layout type. So grid, photo size small, aspect ratio. So if you want to make them like this, you want to change the aspect ratio of the blocks, how it shows, you can do so like that. Go to display. Now space between photos, or in this case, uh, these will be articles. So you can increase the space between them. Uh, again, you've got the bottom bar. So in this case, all of the pages are going to show up here. So you can choose to have off, so it doesn't say anything, or you can choose to have it under. So it's going to show the title of the article under covering like this or bottom bar. Info hover, show or hide. So if you want to show it, when you hover over it will show some text or whatever. Info text alignment, left, center, and so on. Just like you can with your photo galleries. Uh, pagination, that basically what will happen is that as, as you start to fill up this page with lots and lots of articles, as people scroll down, there'll be too many to load at once. So if you select it to scroll, then as people scroll and they get to the bottom, it will automatically load more for you. Similar, it, it works the same way as uh, your photo galleries. Uh, organize, set by organizer position, date added, date modified, or name. So you can choose how they look. If you choose organizer position, then you can basically, uh, you can move them around just like you can the photos in your gallery, which I'll show you in a minute. Or you can choose by date. So if you choose by date, then your blogs will always show in chronological order. So it's entirely up to you. So I'll choose organizer position. Let's set done and done and publish now. So now here is my index page. Here is my first blog. Click that and now people can read my first article. So now you see I've added another article and it's shown up here. Now you can see the clearly the gap there. So if you want to um, increase that gap, you can. You don't want them too close together. So again, come into tools and display and widen that gap maybe to 24. There you go. Look done, publish now. So here is my main index page and here are my blogs and this is my blog. Now all I need to do each time is, is repeat that process, create a new page in that folder, do all my layout, design, paste everything in, create my page, make it go live and it automatically appears here. But how do we get, how do people get to this page and how do people get between blogs? Now, most blogs have an automated system where you can navigate to the next blog or the previous blog or go back to the main index page. All you need to do then is, is simply customize the, add a, add a button to each blog page. So if we go here to this blog, customize design, we go to the bottom. Come down here to navigation and add a button at the bottom. Just call it something simple like sorry, back to index, set the size of the button, button type, solid or outline color default or accent centralize the button if you want and you want to select page I choose 
and choose item and then select this one which is your folder click done publish now scroll to the bottom click that button to be taken back to the index page and just repeat that process on each page now the next step is to add this page to your menu and also you can add your individual blocks in a drop down again customize design on any page because we're now we're going to adjust the menu come up to your menu on entire site click that and then go to links and just add a link so you can call it again if you want to call it blog you can or you can call it articles link to a page I choose choose the page again our photography articles folder there we go open in a new tab no sublinks no or you can switch that on to include sublinks then if we click done publish now then it will automatically show but it shows everything it also shows you folders now it's showing it unlisted because I'm logged in so anyone who's not logged in is not going to see this so if we do that it will automatically add it to your menu but then it can get really long of course if you've got lots and lots and lots of articles it can get really long so it might actually be better to just save the drop down menu to some of your best or newest or most important articles the articles that you want to feature so come back in come back here turn that off and then go back again sorry add another link now we'll add the focal length comparison page I choose now let's go into my folder find that page click OK and done now you see it's added it there we don't want it there do we so let's go back and drag it and move it across to make it a sub link of the articles link so it will appear in the drop down menu there we go click done now it appears in the drop down menu so they can click this to go to your main articles page or they can go straight to this article itself okay so there you have it a blog blogging with smug mug it is possible it takes you have to do it a slightly different way but it is possible so now any new articles any new pages that I create under that folder which will hence be my articles will automatically appear in here now they'll appear one after the other now if I want to go and change them around I just go to organize folder and you can see here all I need to do is move them so if I move them like that there we go now go back to view on site now because I've selected that it's in order now you can see they're switched so you can organize them manually yourself or you can set to have them organized by date so just like I showed you uh, when building the blog or article pages you can customize your folder or your main index page any way you want just by going to the page itself and customizing design so you can add a header photo you can add more photos more text whatever you want you can reposition these like we've shown using the margins or if you only have something like this and you only have to start with a couple of blogs again you can just go to your layout and instead of making this one stretchy make it fixed and you can make it centered for example and you can make it smaller like this for example 600 let's leave it like that for now now I've got everything nice and centralized and and you can keep it like that or as your blog grows and you start adding more articles then you can just widen the page to to 
include a row of three or row of four, however you want to do it. So one last thing before we finish up. On most blogs, you get a section where people can comment on your articles and also a section where people can share your article on uh, social media. So we have these features too on SmugMug, although they're a bit limited. The social sharings are a bit limited, but still it's possible. So go to your, you have to do it on a page by page basis. So go to the page where you want to add this. So when you're building your page, you'll add this at the same time. And then come down and you'll find a social section in the content blocks. You've got profile. Now profile is your SmugMug profile. So if you want to add that to your uh, blog pages anywhere, you can do so. Uh, social icons will be your own, links to your own social pages and share buttons. So that's the one we want now. So we can add share buttons to the bottom. Now I would add it before the back to index button. And, and it gives you, as I said, quite limited. You can, you've got a tweet button and a Facebook like button. Again, you can just simply come in here. You can turn them off. So you can turn off the like button or turn it on and vice versa. So you can have one or the other or both. And you can set a, a hashtag for the tweet when someone shares it. And by default, of course, share this page. But you can have a custom setting, but you want to share this page. That's the whole point. Then come to display, position it, center, left, right, wherever you want to. Have the layout horizontal or vertical like this. And the count position for the like button can be above or to the right. So fairly straightforward. The comment section. So here again in the social section, you can add a comment section. Now the comments are smug mug settings. So SmugMug allows you to leave, allows people to leave comments on your photos, on your pages, or, or however you want to set it. So you can uh, set this up by simply adding it here like this. Set the dimensions just like you did with everything else, or make it smaller if you want to. So there's our comments box, fairly simple. If we come to the tools, you can add a title. So source, choose the item. Well, uh, you want people to comment on this page. So come and navigate to the page and set that as the page where you want people to leave comments, quite simply. And done. So click done to publish now. Go to the page. Now view it logged out, obviously. Otherwise, uh, you're going to see it slightly differently. So now visitors to your page can scroll to the bottom and they get an option to like it, to tweet it, or to enter a comment. Now, if you enter a comment, you must be logged in. You can't, no, no one, no visitors to your site can enter, a, can make a comment unless they are logged in. So this is a way to protect your photos and your, pay, your site and your blog from spammers, of course, which is a good thing. So people can log in with a SmugMug account if they're uh, part of the SmugMug community. They can log in with a Facebook account or they can log in with a Google account and they can simply leave the comment there and click away. So now if I've signed into SmugMug, now I get the option to leave my comment and they can leave a rating anywhere up to five stars. So that's an option you have. Now you can control this if you go to your account settings, go to stats, and the comment section here, if you click details, you can choose to tick this to require approval. So if anyone leaves a comment before it goes alive or public on your site, you can approve it first, which, which is a good thing. I think it's worth ticking that just in case somebody leaves nasty, hateful comments and you don't see it. Then if you come to your main page notifications and you can turn on comment alerts so you can be notified via email if somebody leaves a comment on your blog so it's that simple now your uh, smug mug website has a blog people can come to the articles section and look at the articles oh that looks interesting click that one read the article so as i've set every image can be expanded into a light box like this so they can view it larger and so on
they can go come down here they can like tweet enter a comment go back to the index have a look at the next article now some of these articles like this for example uh, is an article that uh, is designed to promote the photo and also to uh, market it and encourage people to buy so this is an image from my gallery so this is one of the bigger images and I talk about the photo I talk about how I took it so people can get a bit of a background and they can click the photo to enlarge it and in this case they get the option to buy it because that's the setting I've allowed for this photo because it's in my main galleries and it's for sale so this kind of an article for example is designed to promote photos and create sales where the other article was more a, a tutorial and the image is there for illustration purposes so uh, if I click this for example there's no option to purchase but if there is an image within your article that you do want to create for sale then take it from one of your main galleries of course which will then allow people to purchase that image so this one here for example I could set this because it's a nice this was just an illustrative image nothing special but this one was the final image which was really really good so I could decide to set that for sale if I want to so I would just take it from my public gallery so there you go now you have a smug mug blog so it's easy well it's not uh, you know it's it's maybe not so straightforward as a, a WordPress or other one of these places that has a, a blogging facility but it can be done and it's a little bit of extra work but not that much so I hope you found this useful and if you did please give this video a like please uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out some of my other videos and remember if you're new to smug mug if you don't have a smug mug account and you haven't uh, signed up to the 14 day trial then head on down to the description here and click my affiliate link and that will give you a 15% discount should you decide after your 15 day 14 day trial sorry to uh, sign up to one of the smug mug plans so thanks for watching and catch you later bye bye